This is Necrostevo, and it's time for an Arceus header. That's right, we're going to have more than three battles in this video. Uh, of course, Hydragon has three heads. You could also call it a Dodrio header or a Dugtrio header, but I had seen those titles before, so we went with Hydragon. But Arceus has 1,000 arms, so I guess just any amount over that, it's like, it's like going to the Arceus power. But all these matches will be taken that I do Arceus headers from, uh, they're from the April Friendly. So I'll be sure to leave a link to the team analysis video I had. In this battle, uh, I start off with Ferrothorn just because a l he had several physical Pokemon, and he also had a Mega Kangaskhan that he did not bring to this battle. Um, and which Ferrothorn is just such a great check to Mega Kangaskhan, it's just not even funny. Uh, I failed to KO the Greninja because he changed his type to Dark. Uh, with the Dark Pulse, getting a critical hit there. If he had stayed water, I definitely would have one-hit KO'd him. Uh, unfortunately, his Aegis Slash comes in and puts up a substitute before I'm able to Leech Seed him, which is very bad. It is good because it gives me the information that he's carrying leftovers. Uh, now that I know that he has that, I know that I can switch into Zagard and comfortably set up on him and hopefully get out of Aegis Slash with a plus one or plus two. Now, Aegislash does have the ability to two-hit KO sometimes with Shadow Ball, depending on its investment on my Zagard. So it is very important to take into account the amount of damage he might be doing as well. Now, I was a little bit dumb right here. I really should have coiled, but I was hoping that he would just go right for uh, and a, a substitute is what I was thinking. But that's okay. I'm, I'm able to get off a coil on the next turn as he does substitute with his defensive form. I know from experience that most Aegis Slash need plus two uh, in order for me to KO them from full health in their defensive forms. Uh, this is assuming max HP and some defensive investment. So if he's running anything different than that or if he's missing HP because of his substitutes, I should be able to KO him at plus one. Now he switches back to King Shield form once again, I just thought, okay, I don't want him to put up another sub, so I'm just going to try to attack. But no, I really should have just coiled right there. That's okay, though, because here uh, I had a chance of doing about 98% of his HP. He was missing a small sliver of health, so I don't know if that mattered or not. Thanks to my own leftovers, I'm gaining a lot of HP back. And here I get to show off Extreme Speed, which is the main reason in my opinion, to use Zigard over Garchomp. Um, extreme speed and the difference in bulk. And here we see that difference in bulk come out. A Life Orb Dragon Claw is unable to KO my Zigard, and I'm not, I wasn't even at full HP, and I can KO him back with Outrage. That means my first battle from the friendly was really just Zigard kind of walking all over my opponent's team there. Now in match two, we see that my opponent has Ditto, Xerneas and Blastoise, while I'm bringing Azumarill, Ferrothorn, and Mewtwo. Uh, of course, I decided to run Mega Mewtwo X during this tournament, uh, not only for the increased physical bulk, but also for the stab fighting attacks that are really good against the likes of Ferrothorn, Kangaskhan, and, and so on and so forth. Now, I do think I make a bit of a misplay in the beginning. I switched out, hoping to threaten him out, I guess. I don't know what my thinking was there. Uh, I wanted to threaten him out with a a possible Thunderbolt that I did not have. Even if I did have Thunderbolt, it would not one-hit KO Blastoise. So I really don't know why I did that. I even, I risk, um, not only do I get critical hit, but I also risk a possible confusion. So I, I would have been able to take that a lot better. I'm not sure why he, why he went for Water Pulse on a Zoom roll. Um, but I just took a completely unnecessary risk there when I could have just stayed in and went for Play Rough. Granted, my hit rate with play rough during this tournament was really, really suspect. Psy Strike is not even a 2 hit KO. Uh, so that all that whole thing is just really kind of sad. Uh, but anyways, though, going to go out into Ferrothorn now. I didn't want to bring back out Azumarill because I, I wanted him to think that I were 
Bandit, I guess, is what I was thinking there. But I'm able to finish off the Blastoise, and now he's going to bring out Ditto. Now, I really don't agree with my opponent bringing out Ditto when he brings it out. Because not only does he transform into Ferrothorn, but I know his set. And I know how much HP I have left, so I'm able to do a quick calculation and see, okay, if I don't touch him, we will kill each other at the same time. Uh, so we see how much damage he takes from the Power Whip, the Rocky Helmet, and the Recoil Damage from Iron Barbs. And now you see why Ferrothorn is such a nice little check to Kangaskhan. Because Kangaskhan hits two times every time it attacks Ferrothorn. And this is just Ferrothorn attacking over and over and over. And I'm just going to go for Leech Seed because I don't want to touch his Iron Barbs. <laughs> so we end up with a nice little double down here based on him wanting to attack me. I'm not going to argue with that. Definitely a weird scenario. Uh, my last Pokemon, of course, is um, going to be Azumarill, while his last is Xerneas. And every Xerneas that I encountered in the tournament, I think I had something like 40 matches, 50 matches, they all just do the same thing. They Power Herb Geomancy, and that's so ridiculously predictable that that allows me to win this battle. Because uh, I'm just able to play rough and then follow up with an Aqua Jet, and that finishes Xerneas. That critical hit did not matter, uh, just because of the damage calcs I've done, where I do about 30 to 40% against the Xerneas. So, yeah, good batches all around right there. Now, in match number three, we see that I have Ferrothorn, Mewtwo, and uh, Talonflame. Of course, my Talonflame is banded, max speed, max attack. Uh, there, I saw so many spreads for Talonflame to try to maximize the bulk, and I decided that I really just wanted to outspeed all the other Talonflame. At the end of the day, I thought that that was a little more important. Um, Charizard X was definitely more popular during the singles tournament than Charizard Y, and all of them, I think maybe barring one that went for Substitute, immediately went for Dragon Dance which ends up being very predictable, and it also means that you might lose in a one-on-one -on -one versus a Ferrothorn holding a Rocky Helmet. Because I Elite Seated, predicting his, uh, his Dragon Dance right there, and then of course, the Flare Blitz is a contact move, and he's going to take recoil damage from it. And so after the recoil from all that, he almost dies if I had had one more turn of Elite Seed damage on him. So Charizard losing to a Ferrothorn, not, not, um, not too promising there. I don't see Venusaur ever doing that, really. But he also didn't really bring anything that could take on a Talonflame. I was expecting right here that he would have Focus Sash on his Greninja, but he does not. And because I KO'd Charizard at such a low amount of HP, I still have plenty of HP to give in recoil damage to these Brave Birds. And I really did think Diggersby would have the bulk to live a Brave Bird, but it is not. Uh, and of course, mine is Max Attack, Max Speed because I really thought it was more important to outrun all of the, all the other Talonflames running around there. So that was a quick little match. Now in match number four, I, th I believe we're on, I actually ended up running Mewtwo, Talonflame, and Ditto in this match. He basically just had a team full of threats, and it was almost a counter team to my team, if that makes sense, because my team is kind of random, but it's designed to, to generally deal with, or she, is designed to generally deal with, you know, the metagame that I expected. But I did not expect Cloyster, for sure, and Cloyster handles a lot of Pokemon. Now, she actually ends up switching Cloyster out from Ferrothorn, maybe expecting the Thunderbolt, but that is exactly why I'm running Mega Mewtwo X, so that I don't have to rely on Thunderbolt and I can go for Aura Sphere for slightly more coverage, which opens up Ice Beam as a usage move as well. Now, I really did miss out on Flamethrower on Mega Mewtwo X, especially against the likes of uh, Aegislash. Granted, Mega Mewtwo X doesn't like going up against Aegislash in the first place, but uh, Flamethrower is the only move that I really was like, oh, I wish I had that so many times during the tournament. Now, once again, we see Charizard X. Uh, I have Rock Slide on Mega Mewtwo just for Charizard because Charizard likes to think that oh, I can just take a Thunderbolt, or I can just do whatever, and it's like, no, this is Mega Mewtwo X, we carry some physical moves here, or our one physical move, rather. Uh, and once again, Dragon Dance, uh, here is where Mega Mewtwo X really shows its colors, because the added defense from Mega Evolving 
means that I'm able to take a plus one Tough Claws boosted Dragon Claw and KO it back with a Psy Strike. Um, the only reason to try going for Rock Slide on the first turn, of course, is just in case I get the flinch chance. After that, it's no, there's no reason in risking the 90% accuracy there. I was fairly certain that the Cloister would have Ice Shard, but I wanted to stay in and keep him honest right there. I was just going to go for a Psy Strike. And then he takes that Banded Brave Bird really, really well. It barely does over half. Fortunately, uh, I do put him at a range where I can comfortably take him out with his own Rock Blast by switching in my own Ditto. So good thing he didn't want to go for a substitute or anything like that. That would have been annoying. And of course, I kept Ditto for last in case he decided to go for Shell Smash. That way I wasn't switching in Ditto before he went for Shell Smash because then I would miss out on the boosts that he might accrue. So I'm able to finish him off with a Rock Blast, or four actually, and uh, that match was actually pretty interesting. So thank you, Maddie, for that match. I don't think I saw Cloyster at any other point during the tournament there. Now in this final battle video that we have for today, we see that my opponent has two of the same Pokemon that I was bringing. Uh, we both have a lot of threats on our teams, and I did not want to bring anything that his Ditto could transform into and take advantage of things. But uh, I ended up bringing Zagar because he had an Aegislash, and I did not bring Ferrothorn like I normally bring for Kangaskhan because he had a Charizard, I believe. So I really thought some of those were going to be popping in there. And yeah, so we now have to deal with Mega Kangaskhan without the likes of Ferrothorn, which really punishes Mega Kangaskhan for hitting twice. Uh, Fake Out, of course, is not going to do very much damage, but it does put me in KO range for when he gets a bunch of boost here. Otherwise, he would need a lot more boost to KO me. He goes for return, and that sucks because with the fake out damage, now I'm in range of KO for a power up punch. But what he doesn't know is that I have my own ditto. And anytime uh, I, on, during this tournament, that I saw that my opponent had a ditto, you really need to send your own ditto in first. If you send your ditto in first, then your opponent's ditto cannot get their imposter ability off because ditto, of course, cannot copy another ditto. Um, and I actually was debating on whether or not I wanted to send it in now or later, but after he knocks me out with the power up punch, the answer is definitely now because now I have a scarfed Mega Kangaskhan with plus two on attack. So even if he had Sucker Punch, it wouldn't KO me because he he knows his own Kangaskhan's bulk. And although I do have less HP than a real Mega Kangaskhan. And now he brings out Mewtwo, and I was going, hmm, is he going to Mega Evolve here? If he Mega Evolves, he probably still won't outspeed a Scarf Mega Kangaskhan. And he doesn't. He just goes down to a return, or two returns. And his last Pokemon, Ditto, runs into the exact scenario that I mentioned can't transform into me so he's just a regular ditto just hanging out and that means that's going to be the end of ditto so I hope that you all enjoyed these first five matches from the April friendly uh, trying to get my analysis on them it's just good to see what people are using and the, the different ways that in which they are being used that way for the next friendly we can be a little bit more prepared together so if you all enjoyed this series or this Arceus header be sure to leave a like those really help way more than you can ever know. I can show you the Google Analytics for it if you even want. The likes really, really help a video. And be sure to comment on some of the things that you saw during the friendly or uh, some of the things that, you're, that you maybe want me to talk about as I'm going back through my friendly uh, videos. You guys have a great week and I will talk to you all later. Bye bye now.